Now, if you've already downloaded the plans, uh, you'll want to go ahead and get the wing pieces cut out. Um, and what I've got here are the center piece of the wing and then the two pieces that are on the port side, on the left side, um, already cut out. Um, and I've got them creased and I've got the, I've got the, the hinges cut and, and ready to go. Um, so let me show you kind of what I've done here. Um, on each one of these pieces, there is a score line down the center so that the wing folds over and creates the cross section of the wing. And then there are two uh, creases where the I've just creased the paper. I just used like a popsicle stick or a bamboo skewer with a ruler and just dented the paper. The paper's not cut, it's just dented so that when you bend it then, it will break at that point and get a nice clean, uh, nice clean fold. And the center here, this is the score cut that's gonna become the leading edge of the wing. And I've score cut that 50% of the way through, then folded it back and cut a 45 degree bevel just to remove some of the foam so there's not as much piling up as the, as the wing folds over. Now I've also attached uh, the spar, uh, the, the foam spar uh, pieces to, to all of these pieces uh, individually. Now the spar itself is just a one inch wide strip of foam that's then been um, scored down the middle and folded in half and it's standing here on edge. This is a lot like the spar that goes in the, in the flight test uh, Spitfire. Um, it's, it ends up being a half an inch thick and two foam thicknesses wide. And there's some marks on the plan that show the leading edge of the front spar and the trailing edge of the back spar, and you can just glue those down. Now, ultimately, this wing is going to come together, and that spar is going to be continuous down the length of the wing. But because of the way this is glued up, it's hard to get the bevel on the end of the spar exactly right so that it'll meet up after all of these pieces are folded. And you don't really need to worry about that. The strength and stiffness of the wing does not come from the spar. The spar is really just a spacer to keep the sides of the foam board for the top and the bottom the correct distance apart. The real strength comes from connecting these two parallel surfaces to each other across the top and the bottom of the wing. And uh, as those pieces are glued together, that's ultimately what gives the wing its stiffness and that's what keeps it from flexing in this direction. The spar does not have to connect. The ends don't have to fit together. They don't even have to touch. Okay, so the other thing that I want to show you is on the, uh, the end part of the wing here, we've got the spar. The spar ends and I have the servo glued down. Now in some uh, airplanes, you want to try to, I know in the flight test Spitfire, you really want to try to have the servo wire tacked down going back through the wing with the extension on it so that once you get the wing glued up, you've already got it routed to the center. That would be really convenient here, but because we have to make these glue joints across the wing, it doesn't work that well. And so we're going to uh, want to go ahead and leave that wire hanging out the end. And then later, after the wing's completely glued up, we'll fish that back through the wing using a flexible piece of piano wire or uh, anything else that'll fit, that'll fit through, that'll follow around the curves uh, of the, the wing folds, um, hook on that wire, and then pull it back through. Now, the way this wing comes together, and because of the shape of the aileron on the F4U Corsair and the position of it, we really want the servo quite a bit outboard of where the end of the aileron is. And because of that, we have to cut a clearance in the bottom part of the wing so that the aileron has space to move down into. Um, and because of that, uh, we can't bring, like we can bring this portion of the wing back and actually glue it right down to the underside of the top uh, foam board, but there's going to be a gap here. So what I've done is I've just glued a small spacer. This is one thickness of foam board, uh, just glued on right behind this, this cutout. Now it's parallel to the trailing edge of the wing. It's not parallel to the cutout for the aileron. It's actually parallel to the trailing edge and to the spar because that's the way the foam is going to fold over it. And so then when the wing is put together, that spacer then takes up the space in the wing and um, makes everything lay flat and continuous so that you don't end up with a, a twist in the wing or a, a warp in the wing. 
Okay, so these pieces are ready to glue up. Now, when you actually glue them up, you wanna glue them up individually, bring them around, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the bottom aligns with the top, because a small error here, getting this misaligned one direction or the other, is gonna result in a lot of difficulty getting the angle correct when you try to glue the pieces of the wing together. So this is the center section of the wing. Again, I'm only gluing up one side. There's two more pieces that are the mirror images of these that glue up out the other direction. I'll just demonstrate on one half of the wing and the, the uh, construction technique on the other side is exactly the same. So we want glue in that joint, on the top of the spar, and on the top of the trailing edge of the bottom. So I'll just go ahead and put glue in the joint, glue across the spar, glue across the trailing edge, and then just bring this over. You just wanna make sure that everything is down, and again, make sure, looking on the sides here, that it's centered, and everything is nice and flat against the board. With this narrow piece in the center, this is actually really easy to do. Okay, and we got a little bit of squeeze out on the ends here, and I'll just go ahead and Wipe those up, get those out of the way. So that's the center section of the wing. You can see on the bottom, it's um, the bottom's narrower than the top, and that's uh, exactly how we want it because the wing from this point is then gonna bend downward and come in this direction. And so you want the, the bottom to be narrower than the top. Okay, then the next section of the wing will do exactly the same thing. Glue in the leading edge glue on the top of both spars, and glue on the top of the trailing edge of the bottom of the wing. And bring that over, and glue it. Now in this case, the top and bottom are almost exactly the same size, uh, or ex exactly the same width, and we're just gonna try to line those up. You actually want the inboard side of this uh, to line up um, almost exactly, and then any overlap you want on the outside of the wing. This is the port wing, so this is on the left side, and so this little bit of overhang um, is here on the left. I know that's hard to see uh, from this angle. Um, this wing is designed so that the bottom plate comes back, and if you glue right at that edge, then the bottom edge of the trailing edge of the wing should actually be touching the board. So it ends up coming down right um, exactly against the board. So you don't need a spacer the way this particular wing is, uh, is laid out. Okay, and now we need to glue the uh, outboard section of the wing. And this one you want glue on the trailing edge and you also want glue on the top here. This trailing edge behind the spacer isn't actually gonna make any contact with the top, that'll be open. So glue on the trailing edge and on the spacer, on the spars, and in the, the leading edge of the wing. And again, make sure that the servo uh, lead is out and is not caught in any of the glue joints. Now because the leading edge is relatively long on this, um, the, the side to side uh, motion of this is very limited. You can see, maybe you can see here that the bottom plate is sticking out ever so slightly, maybe a millimeter, millimeter and a half. Um, and that's actually correct because of the way the wing's gonna go together. So I'm just gonna hold this and focus on keeping it really flat on the board until the glue cools and hardens. Okay, I think that's good. And on the bottom, you can see we've got, still got the servo wire. Uh, this will later be fished back in behind the spar through the wing all the way to the center. Now, the when you saw the flat pieces, they have some uh, curves, the sides are not straight. And what that does is it creates this bevel. And so let me turn this so you can see it. Um, the side of the wing, rather than being flat, is actually beveled in. And the reason the curves are there is to cause the bevel to, to travel around as the thickness of the wing changes. And so if you take the center piece and the side piece and set the bottom plates together and that there's a gap in the top and then as you pull it up, it closes and you end up 
uh, with the 30 degree angle that's at this second joint in the wing. And everything fits together neatly. And if you uh, ultimately get glue into that joint, which is our goal here before we're done, um, this will be very, very rigid and will hold that 30 degree bevel. And then in the center of the wing, we have the same thing going on, except that it bevels downward by 20 degrees. So that what ends up happening when this whole wing is done, we've got the center section that's level with the fuselage, and then the next section of the wing goes down. It's a 10 degree bevel on each piece, so it goes down 20 degrees. And then the um, outside tip of the gull wing then comes up by 30 degrees, so it ends up pointing up 10 degrees relative to the center. And that gives you the F4U Corsair gull wing shape. Okay, the trick to getting this glued up is some kind of holding fixture to be able to uh, get the wing into the correct orientation at the correct angle without any kind of twist uh, going on between the pieces. And the easiest way to do this um, is to build a jig that holds uh, the parts of the wing. In this case, um, I've got a jig that I made out of 3 quarter inch plywood. Uh, this one is 30 degrees. This is for the outboard uh, joint in the wing. So we've got uh, two pieces of, of uh, 3 quarter inch plywood and I used a table saw and cut a 15 degree miter on uh, the edge of each piece so that when those then go together you end up with a 30 degree bend uh, in the jig. Now in this case um, I just put it together with some pocket screws. You don't have to have a, a jig like this. You can instead, um, you know, th this holds the two pieces of the wing at a precise 30 degree angle and brings them together for the glue up and holds them at that angle while the glue dries or while the glue hardens so that you get a perfect joint. Now you can do um, something very similar with a piece of foam board. You can cut a couple of triangles of foam board at 30 degrees, lay this part of the wing flat on the table, glue this piece against it and put triangles underneath here with uh, a 30 degree angle on them to hold it. And that's, um, that's fine when you're doing one joint and you can do this on the two outboard wing sections. When it actually comes time to then glue, start gluing the center section in and the rest of the wing, that can get very, very cumbersome and hard. So I really recommend uh, if you have the tools or if you have a friend who has the tools actually building the jig uh, to try to hold this because it ends up making it a lot easier to do. So I am going to go ahead and uh, just glue this cold. There's lots of ways to do it. Um, you can uh, put a piece of tape on the bottom, open up the joint, put the glue in, and then close it. But as you can see on the bottom here, there actually is a small gap. If you're very careful and you get the angles right, you can cut out the foam and not cut these pieces at a 90 degree angle. You can cut them at a 15 degree outward bevel. Uh, from the line, it's it's kind of difficult to keep track of, and it's really easy to get confused. And so um, I, I didn't do that here. I just cut it. And ultimately, if you have a laser cutter and you're going to cut these on a laser cutter, you're going to end up with 90 degree bevels anyway. So the way I'm going to do this um, is I'm going to put the outboard uh, part of the wing uh, into the joint. I'm going to glue just the top. I'm not going to glue the bottom so I don't end up gluing it into, into my jig. So we've got a, a piece of foam here to squeegee out the excess glue. And I will just put a nice thick bead of glue on the top surface of the wing. I'm not trying to do the bottom. I'll go ahead and put a little on the top part of the spar. But I don't want this to go through to the bottom surface because I don't want to glue this into my jig. So I'm just going to bring this together and because the top of this is closed and it's the underside that has the gap, there actually is uh, really no squeeze out to speak of on the top. Okay, now if that's had a moment to cure, I didn't get any squeeze out on the bottom, so um, I, don't, I don't have a mess down here to deal with. Now I'm just going to flip the jig over. Back side is the same angle, and this just gives me a, a, an easy way to hold this while I work with it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put glue 
into this joint and just filling it up. And then I'll come back with a piece of foam, crease it a little bit for the V, and just squeegee this off of the joint. Now, when the plane's in flight, there's this outward portion of the uh, wing is going to generate a lot of lift, which is going to try to pull up, which is going to try to separate this joint on the bottom. And so I'm going to put a strip of this fiber packing tape. This is Scotch Extreme Packing Tape. It has uh, fibers going in both directions. There are other brands of tape that will work just as well. I'm just going to put a strip of this across the bottom of this joint to keep it from spreading, since that's the primary force that this joint's going to experience in flight. There will be compression if you're flying inverted. Um, uh, this, this plane will fly inverted. Uh, it works fine, but um, in, in reality, the forces on this wing are not really enough to, to pull the tape apart. The glue itself is probably enough. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape on the top to do exactly the same thing. Now this is a little tricky because you've got to get it down into that groove. Okay, so that's the, that's the outward wing joint and this is very, very strong. You won't have any trouble with this in flight. Um, it seems like you ought to have a spar. It seems like you would need to have uh, uh, you know, carbon fiber or wood or something in there. But in practice, it, it just isn't needed. It just doesn't end up being uh, being needed. Okay, that's the 30 degree jig. Uh, I have another jig that is 20 degrees. Um, this one is smaller, the reason being that um, the center section of the wing is narrower and when we actually go to glue up the other half of the wing, if the jig extended out, it would be in the way. But this gives us the, the correct angle to glue up this portion of the wing. Now, uh, to get 20 degrees, of course, it's a 10 degree uh, bevel on the miter saw on each one of these pieces, or on the table saw. Uh, to get this, you can do this on a miter saw if you, or a radial arm saw, if you have one that has a, enough depth. And, and again, it's just 3 quarter inch plywood. I've glued the joint and put it together with pocket screws. If you don't have the tools to do that, you can just glue the joint up. You can nail it. There's, there's lots of ways to do this. And again, you can make pieces of foam that have that same bevel, uh, glue it to a base plate, and, and build something that gives you that same angle. But the wood is nice and straight. Uh, with the right tools, it's easy to get it clean so that you don't end up with any twist in the wing uh, when you're done. And I've just uh, glued and nailed down strips on the side to capture the width of the wing just to make it easier to line this up. Now in this particular case, on this wing, uh, it's the bottom edge that's going to be closed. And so I'm going to attempt to glue that bottom edge and the top edge all in one go and try to put it together in such a way that I don't get much squeeze out on the bottom so I don't end up gluing it to the jig. Uh, you could always put down a piece of wax paper, a piece of parchment, a uh, baking sheet, whatever, uh, whatever you need in order to make it not stick. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go for broke, and if it sticks, I'll pull it off and just deal with the mess. But I don't think it's going to be an issue. So I'll go ahead and put glue on the ends of this. I'll try not to get it on the bottom, but I'll get plenty of glue on this bottom surface because this is where a lot of the strength of the wing is going to come from. Now, I've already made a mess, but I think this is going to work out in the end. Let's get it down in here, get the joint together. And it looks like I got a little bit of tearing, but I think it's going to be fine. You can just pretend you didn't see that, and you can use wax paper when you do yours. So I got plenty of glue in that joint um, on the bottom, so that's going to be uh, very strong. I do have a small gap here in the top. And I'll lay a bead over the top of this where there's a little gap in the joint. And then I'll squeegee the excess off. 
And again, this, this doesn't have to be super neat because it's going to be covered with tape. As long as you don't have big globs of glue sticking out the top of the wing, you'll be fine. And then just like on the other sections of the wing, I'm going to reinforce this with uh, extreme packing tape on the top and on the bottom. Okay, now once the entire wing is glued up, you'll want to then uh, take a piece of tape and run it down the center of the top of the wing. And this just gives you a lot of strength. Uh, again, I'm not doing the whole wing. I've only do, I'm only doing half of it here uh, just to demonstrate the technique. Um, and that is how you build the Corsair wing. And of course, you know, you'll have the other two pieces on the other side. Now this is very, very strong. Uh, you can flex on this all day. The weight of the plane in flight is not going to be a problem at all. I've built two of these and flown them, and they're very, very durable. The, the only reason I had to build a second one is because the first one had a little bit of a twist, and uh, that's why I built the jigs. So if you've got a table saw or if you've got a friend with a table saw, the jigs are the best way to go. If you don't have access to that, again, you can just cut wedges out of foam, and that'll give you the, uh, the, the shape that you need. Now, to get the... Uh, to get the servo wires flush, uh, routed back through there, you're actually going to fish those through this gap behind the two spars. So you end up just using your knife and cutting out an opening um, behind the spar in the top of the center section of the wing. You don't really want to cut into the section above the spar. That is really where most of the strength of the wing comes from. Because this is the thickest part of the wing, that's where the tension and compression forces in the foam board have the most mechanical advantage. And so you don't really want to cut there, but anything that you cut behind here, as long as you don't make the hole too big, isn't going to be a problem. And then you can just take a thin piece of, uh, of wire, um, uh, like piano wire, bend a little hook in the end, snake it through the wing, hook the servo wire onto it, and then just pull it back out. Of course, you'll have to put an extension on it first because the wire of just the servo is not long enough. And then that will give you the full wing uh, that you can then build and attach to the fuselage with rubber bands. And uh, your plane will be ready to fly. I hope that helps. And I hope you enjoy your Corsair.